Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Batten here. And today we're talking about a premium battleship that has not aged well at all. She didn't enter this game the best of conditions, unfortunately, as this is a real still historical ship. And boy, oh boy, has any appeal of the ship, in my opinion, completely gone now. That is the Tier 7 premium French battleship, the Strasbourg. Now, the Strasbourg is, like I said, a real still historical ship. This is the sister ship to the Dunkirk. The Dunkirk class were designed to take on the Deutschland class, which is, of course, the Graf Spies class that uh, the Germans had begun to build in the 1920s. She and her sister both had 8 to 330mm, or 13-inch guns, in order to counter the measly 6 11-inch uh, guns of the Deutschland class. Now, uh, Strasbourg managed to avoid the uh, incident at, Mer at uh, Merz el Kabir. However, she was later transferred to Toulon, where she was scalded by the French, then raised by the Italians, given to the Germans, then sunk by the Americans in 1944 by a, an aerial dropped bomb. She was sold for scrap in 1955, sadly. So, it's a real still historical ship with an uh, interesting history behind it, being one of the few French ships to escape uh, the British onslaught, then to simply just be scuttled later on when the uh, Germans attempted to seize her. But anyway, in game, we have the Dunkirk already at tier 6, which is, again, same thing as the Strasbourg, so it's a ship to the Strasbourg. But why is this one at Tier 7? Well, my friends, there are some slight improvements to this ship over the Dunkirk. And I do mean ever so slight when it comes down to the hard figure. So first off, the probably biggest noticeable difference between the two ships when it comes to their stats is the armor. Strasbourg, unlike the Dunkirk, has a 283mm main belt while the Dunkirk has a measly 225mm belt armor. So you get about 60 more millimeters of armor, which, I mean, hey, that, that is more armor, sure, but it's still not the thickest belt by Tier 7 standards, and it's not really going to save you if you slip up and show somebody broadside, because, again, you're at Tier 7 now, which we'll get to the challenges that that involve here in a moment. Her guns, those eight 13-inch guns, do have a 25 base second reload time compared to the Dunkirk's uh, 26 second base reload time. And then the Strasbourg gets 0.1 more Sigma than the Dunkirk. So her sh salvos are slightly, slightly less wonky than the Dunkirk's. Now Dunkirk and Strasbourg both have the French battleship AP which is that hypervelocity French AP that means that even though you have smaller than normal shells for your tier, they hit quite hard. I mean, both the Dunkirk and the Strauss's AP come out at 870 meters a second, which is absolutely screaming by tier 6 and tier 7 standards. So with the Dunkirk at tier 6 with that AP, that means that if you catch somebody's broadside, and of course being a tier 6 ship, you see tier 6 and tier 5 games quite often you can see up to tier 8 but thanks to that velocity you can still pack one hell of a punch if something slips up and show you broad and shows your broadside if cruisers slip up and actually angle to you rather than show you broadside the shells will arm better when the ship is angled because of course angling increases the effective thickness of the armor so you're quite good at clapping cruisers that are angled or heavily armored enough cruisers that are selling broadside in both the Dunkirk and the Strasbourg. So it's understandable that at tier six, the Dunkirk with such amazing guns, when we're talking about just the penetration values, has to have you know a, li a little bit wonkier dispersion, and it still has 26 second re uh, a 26 second reload, which kind of makes up for it. Now the Strasbourg at tier seven has those same guns, and the same is very true about it. If a battleship shows you broadside, and with the slightly better sigma and the slightly better reload, you know you you can make those juicy shots happen a little bit more often. It's not a big noticeable difference in my experience, at least. Now, um, with the Dunkirk, by the way, I've played a lot of Dunkirk. Dunkirk was one of my first premiums that I picked up when I started to play this game. 
and I picked up, I believe I got her in some event. I cannot remember what event I got her in, but I got her for free, and it was like the Dunkirk and the Texas were my first two premium ships. So I've got a lot of games in Dunkirk, and I like the Dunkirk, I really do, which puts me apart from most other <laughs> players because Dunkirk does not have a good reputation, but I like it. Toulon, I hate. And you might be asking, well, why Sea Lord? It's, you know, it's got a little bit better reload, a little bit better Sigma. It's got a little bit better belt armor. Well, because, dear viewer, because they couldn't just give us a spicier Dunkirk at Tier 7, they had to go and give the ship a gimmick, which is main battery reload booster, if you haven't noticed on screen yet. So, it's a Dunkirk with slightly better Sigma, slightly better armor, slightly better reload time, and a reload booster. Which, I mean, on the surface, sounds great. If it was like a tier 6 ship. <laughs> I mean, I understand that, you know, you, you can't give the Dunkirk a reload booster at tier 6 and just, you know, copy and paste it over and say, yep, yep we're going to keep this as a tier 6 premium. I understand that, because that is a little bit nutty. But they updated it to tier 7, and they didn't really do enough to the base ship to make this ship a good tier 7 premium ship in my opinion, because, yeah, it does have a slightly thicker belt, slightly better Sigma, and a slightly faster reload, but that's all you get. And you're getting thrown to Tier 7 matchmaking, which means that this ship can and will see Tier 9 games. There's no protected matchmaking on this ship. You can and will get up-tiered to Tier 9. So now you have what is essentially a Dunkirk hole without enough meaningful change to help you survive at Tier 9. Now, you do have the Reload Booster, and the HE on the Dunkirk and the Strasbourg. It's, it's no slouch. It's pretty decent. It's no challenge to really start fires with these guns, thankfully, because they are only 330mm guns, which means that, of course, you're not overmatching much of anything at all with these guns, except for, you know, some very light cruisers, especially once you get up to, to um, <laughs> Tier 9. So, you can spam HE and, you know, kind of make it work at Tier 9, but it's still painful to be shot back because, yeah, you got 60-something millimeters of more belt armor, but the Tier 9 ships simply don't care. <laughs> because, especially in Tier 9 today, with all this 457 millimeter. Uh, and above ships that they're starting to creep their way into tier 9 or just the large caliber guns that we have at tier 9 now they, they do not care about your 26 millimeter bow and stern nor your 280 ish millimeter belt armor that you do have you know torpedo bulges in front of they simply don't care you're just a cruiser to them because we now have a whole line of these ships that are better than the Straussburg. We have the French Battlecruiser line now, which are based upon the design of the Dunkirks. It's, it's a what if, you know, the French went ahead with this design, which, ironically, the ships that inspired this design are in the battleship category, but these ships are in the cruiser category. Now, of course, you know, the, the Tier 8 doesn't have the same caliber gun that the Dunkirk and the Strasbourg have, but they have the general same setup and the same characteristics that these ships do they're just developed a bit more because they're at higher tier you know they're more maneuverable they're faster they have real boosted the guns are a little bit more accurate so if you like the playstyle of the dunkirk like i do that's one of the main reasons i love the french battlecruiser line because they're just big dunkirks and i love dunkirk the big dunkirks that are fast and maneuverable and they develop the idea quite well in that line and flesh it out very 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 nicely and the Strasbourg is just this weird, I guess, kind of in-between idea that they maybe thought, okay, what if we give a reload booster to the Dunkirk and we develop this idea up the battleship line? And from what I've seen, at least as far as most of the, the rest of the community has received the ship, it didn't go so well. So I guess maybe they had to push it over to the cruiser line. Because it, 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 it is weird that the other battle cruiser lines, the uh, French, not the French, the British battle cruisers and the German battle cruisers, they are in battleship tech trees but you know i guess with the main with the main caliber gun being capped at what it is with the marseille marseille how do you say the ship's name um they put her they put him in the cruiser line which i hey i think it worked out pretty well <laughs> but yeah now if you just want a higher tier dunkirk you can go just grind up the french battle cruiser line which i which i would highly recommend you do it's a fantastic line i i love it um 
the tier 8, and well, the tier 9 is actually pretty good. The tier 8 is a little rough to get through, but it is well worth the uh, grind to get through. And hey, if you want a tier 7 French cruiser, I'm sorry, a uh, French, well, Dunkirk-esque cruiser, you could also get the Toulon, which is the tier 7 premium French battle cruiser, which is pretty good in my opinion. It's not, it's definitely not one of the, um, best of the best tier 7 premium ships in my mind but it's pretty good in my opinion it's a pretty decent ship and uh if you do like the the um french battle cruisers it is very much more of the same just at tier 7 so if you want that experience at tier 7 now you can get the toulon rather than getting the strasbourg now the strasbourg what i think they should have done is forget the reload gimmick and just Give the ship enough buffs to make it a proper tier 7 premium ship without the gimmick. You know, give it some better armor, give the guns a bigger boost to their... Well, actually, the Sigma's actually pretty alright for a tier 7 if they would just given a bit of a boost to its dispersion, in my mind, and maybe given it like a 24 or 23 second reload time on those guns, then I think you would have had a proper tier 7 Strasbourg that would have aged so much better. Than this ship like yes i get it's cool it's got the reload booster you can get some pretty quick follow-up shots of something showing you a lot of broadside or if you know you just set hg on the bow and battleship and they just put it out you wait for the damage gun to run out pop the reload booster with hg and get them burning yeah sure that's cool and all but in every other way this ship's simply just been outclassed by this new tech line that does what this ship does but better so, besides for historical purposes, because this is a real still ship, like I mentioned at the start of this video, and it's always very sad when these ships that were real, they existed, they served, men served on them, and then they come to this game, and unfortunately they're just kind of... Nah. That's always a tragedy in my mind when that happens. So, sadly, that's the state of the Strasbourg. Completely pass it up, guys. Um, if you want a Tier 7 Dunkirk-esque ship, go for the Toulon. Much better, in my opinion, like I've said and just leave this one where it is where she is and avoid her like the plague so guys let me know you guys thinking about the Strasbourg in the comments down below if you enjoyed today's video make sure to drop a like leave a comment and subscribe to the channel i will attempt to live stream tonight um those of you that normally come out to the live streams my internet has been absolutely garbage uh, i've called them and nee, you, you guys know my situation ISP Monopoly is, I, I love it. It takes me three hours to upload these videos now. Th these 15, 20 minute videos it takes three and a half hours sometimes. So that's fun. On a good day now, it takes an hour and a half. It's, it used to take 20 minutes. But yeah, I'm still fighting that. We'll attempt to stream tonight. If it doesn't work, just check the Discord and check the announcements tab in on the YouTube channel. I'll let you guys know if we have to bail on live stream again. I do apologize, but unfortunately, there's not much I can do in this situation and it's super frustrating for me. So guys, thank you guys for the support. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.